just resuming the recording there. I think we had a bit of a, uh, a pause, that's fine. So brief introductions again. Um, hi, I'm Sophia and I'm an internationalization and recruitment manager for the School of Management at Swansea University. So a lead for admissions um, on a range of programs and essentially I try and find the best talent from across the world to study on our recruitment programs. So we're really, really pleased to have uh, Dr. Mike Buckle, who is a professor in finance, join us today to deliver a fantastic session. Uh, but I'm going to hand over to Mike so that Mike can introduce himself and, and tell you a bit more about what we'll be doing. OK, thanks, Saf. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Mike Buckle. I'm professor of finance in the School of Management at Swansea University. I'm also director of the Hawkes Centre for Empirical Finance. And the other thing I do is I, I'm going to well, I'm going to be program director for the new MSc in financial technology, which begins in September 2021. Brilliant, thanks, Mike. Okay, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're going to what I'm going to be doing uh, in this session. So I'm going to um, introduce you to the kind of world of fintech. Um, so what is fintech? How is it affecting the financial sector? Uh, I'm going to look at some examples of companies in the fintech area, uh, just to give you a kind of taste of, of how it's kind of disrupting uh, the way we kind of uh, interact with financial services. And that, then I'm going to take you through the MSc Financial Technology Programme that we're offering here at Swansea. Brilliant. Thank you, Mike. So just before Mike starts then with, uh, with his presentation, if you can just skip over onto the next slide, Mike. Um, while we're just waiting for a couple more people, um, you can see that we've got a q and If you are on the uh, webinar with us, please do pop your questions and comments for Mike throughout there. You might have to click that one through a couple of times, Mike. I'm not sure how I've done that, but I've managed to design it so that... <laughs> We have to keep clicking through, keeping you all guessing. Um, so you can see that's our lovely location. So many of you will be familiar with Swansea, but just to give you a bit of context, I guess, for, for you know, why we're doing these webinars and where we're coming from. Um, you know, obviously this year has been a very, very challenging year for a lot of people. And, you know, we have seen just such amazing, uh, you know, resilience from our prospective students, from our staff, from our current students that, you know, have changed teaching and learning to going fully online. We're interacting with students, I can see from all over the world, even within this session, which is just amazing and, and a great part of what has come out of COVID that's obviously been, you know, so negative in so many other ways. But that is our beautiful campus. So we're very proud. Uh, Swansea University has turned 100 this year. Um, and that is our you know, 100 centenary logo you can see on the screen. Uh, but the Bay Campus, you'll see from that picture, you know, is, is not quite as old as 100 years. You can see the School of Management is, is quite shiny and new looking. And that's because we were built in 2015. So the school and the university has been going since 1920, but we opened our second campus uh, back in 2015, and that was the Bay Campus, co-located with industry, uh, with you know, a real focus on bringing students, academia and industry all in one place. So that's just a brief bit about our campus. And um, you know, these sessions are really to share what we're doing at Swansea University, uh, particularly in some of these new and dynamic areas. And, and FinTech is something that lots of people are interested in and, and myself included, you know, what is it about and, and what can we get out of this? And how could you potentially join this dynamic industry? So I'm gonna hand back over to Mike now because that is who you're here to see. Um, so thank you, Mike, you can take the reins. Hey, thanks. Okay, so let's uh, begin with a kind of brief look at what uh, fintech is all about. So fintech is essentially the kind of marriage between technology and, the, and financial services. So it's the way in which technology impacts upon the delivery of financial services. So let's just look at um, that in a little bit more detail. So the technology that we're talking about here are things like... Um, apps or software applications, um, things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, blockchain, and the related smart contracts. So these are all technological developments which are increasingly being used to um, 
to change the way in which financial services companies operate. Um, now, most of the, the kind of fintech applications began in the banking sector, and it was mainly existing banks kind of using these technologies to kind of make their operations more efficient. But in the last, I'd say, six, seven years, there's been a kind of move away from the kind of existing financial services companies using technology uh, and that being kind of the fintech, fintech application towards new companies coming in um, and disrupting the kind of traditional way of doing things. Um, so delivering uh, traditional products, but in a completely new way. So let's have a look at some of these um, these fintech kinds of applications then. So many of these you'll be familiar with, but some of them perhaps might be a little bit new to you. So one thing you'll be familiar with is uh, mobile payment applications. So things like Apple Pay or PayPal. So these are ways in which uh, people can make payments for goods and services without having to use cash. And often this, this can be done using a mobile phone or it can be done over a, an internet uh, service. So that's one obvious application of um, fintech and one that's um, very well entrenched now. Um, a more exotic application of fintech is cryptocurrencies. And uh, most people will have heard of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency that uses a blockchain as the way in which it uh, operates. I won't go into too much detail about blockchain here, but blockchain is essentially a kind of decentralized chain of transactions. Uh, so there's no kind of central location for the information that, uh, that um, defines who owns that Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin was probably the first of the cryptocurrencies, but there are now many cryptocurrencies uh, out there. I think at the last count, there's over 2,000 cryptocurrencies. So cryptocurrencies are a kind of growing phenomena. Um, and many people like to invest in cryptocurrencies. The, the main issue with cryptocurrencies at the moment is that um, the value of them is very volatile. Now you'll have seen, and perhaps in the last couple of weeks, that Bitcoin is again at a, at a high level. Uh, but if you go back two or three years, then Bitcoin dropped to a very low level. So that volatility makes it um, a kind of something really for that people need to be aware of. There's a risk involved in investing in, in Bitcoin. But Bitcoin is not just an investment uh, or cryptocurrency is not just an investment. You can also use them to pay for things. Uh, so they act like a currency. Um, so an increasing number of companies allow uh, people to pay for their goods and services using uh, cryptocurrencies. And that's set to grow. And I think the reason why it's set to grow is that central banks are now looking to kind of deregulate this, this market uh, and allow cryptocurrencies to take on a bigger role in the payment system. Okay, another area where um, technology is having an impact is in the insurance sector. And one of obvious um, example of um, insure tech, as it's called, is uh, insurance uh, price comparison sites. And one of the first, of, um, first companies that uh, came into this market was Confuse.com, which we'll talk a little bit about, about uh, later. Um, so they, uh, like the companies that have come after them, um, they use uh, algorithms to identify from a series of questions people's risk profile, and then they match that risk profile up to the products offered by different insurance companies. So you can do everything online or through a mobile application. Um, in fact, most people now uh, choose their insurance products um, through um, InsureTech. Um, then we have peer-to-peer -peer lending. So this is uh, the area of um, 
of lending and borrowing, but through an app or through the internet. So this is kind of entrenching on banks' traditional activities. Uh, so banks traditionally would lend uh, people money um, and taking um, deposits or savings from, from people. Uh, but now you can um, bypass the banks, you can bring lenders and borrowers together through a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, lending site. And the two big examples of that in the UK are Funding Circle and Zopa. Um, and they've gone from strength to strength. They've got bigger and bigger. Peer-to-peer -peer lending is now a kind of uh, a fairly mature sector. There have been some examples of peer-to-peer -peer lending sites um, um, going under, failing in the last couple of years. So that suggests there is a kind of a maturing of the market that the, only the better run companies will, will survive, like Funding Circle or Zopa. Um, so there is another example of uh, the use of technology to, to kind of bring people together, to do risk assessments, and, and then to do the ongoing monitoring of, of, of the product after the lending has taken place. Related to that is uh, crowdfunding. Um, so this is where people can pitch their ideas to the public. Um, it could be a company, a startup company that's got a new product they want to bring to the market, and they need to raise finance to start off the production of that product. Um, so you can pitch those ideas through, through websites like Kickstarter and then people, if they like the idea, can um, take an equity stake in the company uh, for a very small amount of money. Uh, so crowdfunding is now a very well entrenched area of, of uh, the finance system. And then finally, uh, another area that kind of gets less attention, but where there's quite a lot of disruption taking place is wealth tech. So this is the area of um, wealth management or asset management, but done digitally. Um, so two UK companies that are in this sector are Nutmeg and Wealthify. So Wealthify, again, we'll talk about later, that's a, a Welsh uh, company. Um, and they allow people to invest through their website, um, into diversified portfolios for very small amounts of money. So in a sense, they're kind of democratizing um, the whole business of, of wealth management. Um, and the other kind of area that's connected to wealth tech is something called robo advice. So this is where you can uh, obtain investment advice through a, an app or through a, a website. So again, it uses um, kind of artificial intelligence or algorithms to discern what people's risk profile is. And then you can be matched through your risk profile to particular investments. So you get advice without any human being involved. So those are some examples of, um, of the way in which technology is impacting on uh, the financial sector. So let me just talk a little bit about the, the sector and how it's uh, developing in the UK. So it's a rapidly growing um, sector. Um, it's it's uh, centered mainly upon London, but there are kind of growing local clusters. So I've given you four examples there, Manchester, Bristol, Cambridge and Oxford, but also we have a a cluster in Wales, uh, mainly in Cardiff and Newport, but there are some companies starting up in, in Swansea. The one feature of the UK fintech sector is that it's, um, it's kind of very um, decentralized. There are no kind of dominant or not many large dominant companies in the sector. So it's mainly small and medium sized companies. Um, so there are over 2,000 of those in the UK. And in fact, the UK is the largest fintech centre in Europe. Um, and we're probably about the third largest in the Wales, so in the third largest in the world 
after the US, which is the biggest sector, and then China. So it's a rapidly growing sector and there is a need for people with the right skills um, to work in that sector. So it's, it, it's, it's hungry for people with the right skills. This diagram um, tries to illustrate uh, the changing landscape of fintech, um, not just in the UK, but, but anywhere. So you can see that at the uh, vertical axis, we have where the companies are coming from. So um, it could be from the existing financial services sector, so existing banks, or it could be technology companies like say Apple. And then along the horizontal axis, we have the drivers for the use of the technology. So it could be to generate greater efficiencies in the delivery of products, or it could be to kind of disrupt the delivery process to, to come up with completely new ways of delivering this, um, the products to the marketplace. So this kind of sets out some of the things that are taking place. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole diagram in detail, but you can see that um, the existing financial services companies like the banks and insurers ten are tending to use um, the, the new technology to deliver greater efficiency, whereas the disruptors um, are coming in using the technology um, to, to kind of gain market share in the marketplace. Um, so that gives you some idea of the kind of the dynamics of the, of the, the landscape of fintech. So now I'm going to take you through some examples of fintech companies just to give you a flavor of um, the kinds of companies which are which are successful in, in this uh, sector. So uh, the first example is um, Starling Bank. Uh, so this is an example of a digital bank. So they're a disruptor. OK, so they are coming in to the banking sector, which is dominated by the big banks, but they're offering banking services without having to have a branch network. So they're offering everything um, digitally. Uh, so it effectively launched its products to the marketplace in May 2017 um, through a mobile app. Uh, you may have seen adverts on the TV for Starling Bank, so they, they They've um, put a lot of emphasis into um, promotion of their services and it's paid off because they've grown incredibly rapidly. So they have about 1.8 million accounts um, after just what three and a half years of, of operating. And they reached an important milestone um, just a couple of months ago when they're, they're really the first um, disruptor bank to break even, to start making a profit effectively. Um, so that's in a very short space of time. Um, so Starling Bank have kind of been one of the, the first banks into this sector, but there are many banks um, who are um, in this, this space as well, who are growing rapidly. So Atom Bank, uh, Monzo and so on, Metro Bank. So this is a kind of growing sector and it's obviously one the existing banks are concerned about because it's taking business away from them. And now an example from the insure tech uh, part of the financial system. So I mentioned earlier, Confuse.com, which is a Cardiff based company. This was one of, in fact, this was the first of the uh, online um, price comparison sites for car insurance originally. Um, and um, so they just came up with a website. They have a lot of um, computer programmers working there. They have a lot of people who work on machine learning and artificial intelligence. And they've developed their product. So now they offer uh, comparisons across a whole range of insurance uh, products. 
and uh, and it's now become the kind of established way that people buy insurance. So 88% of UK motorists now use comparison sites at least once a year. So they kind of paved the way and then other uh, price comparison sites have come along in their wake. And so now it's the kind of dominant way for people to, to buy insurance products. And then uh, an example of um, a company in the wealth tech area. So again, I've mentioned it earlier. So Wealthify, again, based in Cardiff. Um, so they use sophisticated algorithms and artificial intelligence to offer services that are traditionally offered by wealth management companies, but at a much lower cost. So they're essentially in the business of bringing wealth management to everybody. So it's no longer um, something that's just offered to the most wealthy, most wealthy people in society. So now you can start up a, an investment portfolio with just a pound uh, using their app, uh, but you buy into a diversified portfolio, which, you know, most of the traditional uh, wealth management companies would require you to have at least um, £50,000 to access their services. So this is kind of democratising wealth management. And this is one of the, the big things which is coming out of um, fintech. It's kind of, it's bringing things that are traditionally the preserve of the most wealthy um, to the wider population. Uh, so those are some examples then of, um, of fintech companies. Um, I just want to kind of spend a little bit of time talking about fintech in emerging markets and I'm including China here as an emerging market, although some people would dispute that. Um, but China is uh, one of the fast growing areas of, of fintech in the world. Uh, so it's second only to the US. And it's got, um, you can see there that it, um, in terms of fintech unicorns, um, it's it's the, the main center in the world for fintech unicorns. So just to give you a definition of what a fintech unicorn is, it's um, a unicorn is a company that's been uh, financed by venture capital. And uh, it becomes a, uni a unicorn when it reaches a value of $1 billion. So a fintech company financed by venture capital with a value of uh, $1 billion. So you can see now that um, China has the largest uh, group of fintech unicorns in the world. Uh, and one very big one, uh, which is Ant Financial, which is the kind of fine, the financial uh, spin off from Alibaba. Um, and uh, you may have read recently that. Um, Ant Financial tried to launch an IPO um, just a couple of months ago, but actually it was stopped at the last minute by the Chinese regulator. Um, I won't go into the details as to why that happened, but um, you can see that the, the key point to take out of this is that um, China is an area where there are some very large uh, fintech companies. It's kind of that China, although it has thousands of fintech companies, there are some incredibly large fintech companies there, Ant Financial being the largest of those. Um, so you can see that in terms of fintech uni unicorns, it dominates the rest of the world. Okay, um, turning now to India. Um, so a kind of different uh, landscape in India, um, different to China in the sense that there aren't so many fintech unicorns, so very large fintech companies. But what you're finding in India is it's growing incredibly rapidly. In fact, it's probably the, the, the fastest growing fintech sector in the world. And you can see there uh, the number of fintech startups 
in just one year in 2019 across the range of uh, financial services. So it is a, a very dynamic center for fintech startups. Um, and many of these are small companies. So just to kind of summarize why um, fintech is growing so rapidly, why it's becoming uh, so established is uh, in turn, because of these benefits. Um, so the application of technology to the delivery of financial services brings cost reduction. Uh, it speeds up dramatically decision, the decision-making process. So if you want to get a bank loan, for example, through one of the, uh, the digital banking providers, you can get that decision you know, within a matter of seconds after you answer a, se a series of questions because of the, the use of their artificial intelligence, their algorithms to, to identify whether you're a good risk or a bad risk. So that happens really quickly. Whereas if you went back you know, 15 or so years to get a bank loan, you'd have to make an appointment with the bank and you'd be asked a series of questions and then you may get a decision in the post a few days later. So it speeds up um, the process of um, decision-making dramatically. The third thing I've kind of hinted at through this talk, which is um, it brings greater accessibility to financial services. Um, and this is particularly true in emerging markets and in uh, developing countries generally. It's because a lot of these products are delivered through mobile phone applications. Many, many people in emerging markets and in developing countries have mobile phones. They may not have computers, but they have mobile phones. So they can access financial services through the apps. So um, FinTech is, is, bring, is bringing access to uh, payment services um, and many other services um through apps so it's bringing financial services to, to the traditionally unbanked uh, sector of the population um, the other thing that fintech brings is security um, so particularly within blockchain te technology that is a very secure technology um, it's decentralized there's no central location for it so it's very difficult to for anybody else to to kind of get access to the information stored in the blockchain. So it's a very safe way of, of delivering services. And then finally, resilience. We've seen through the recent pandemic, you know, just how resilient the FinTech model is. You know, people could continue to um, engage in uh, with their financial services providers and um, through FinTech, FinTech applications. Um, so it's a very resilient industry, it can survive shocks. And that means it's, you know, because of these benefits, it's, it's going to continue to grow. So let me now turn to the uh, MSc in financial technology that's um, offered or will be offered by um, Swansea University from September to, uh, 2021. So first of all, what's the aim of this uh, program? Well, it's designed really to um, develop the skill set needed by um, financial technology companies um, so that there's a supply of uh, skilled uh, graduates to go into that sector. It's aimed at people who don't have a computer science background but it is a specialist MSc, so you have to have some understanding of finance, economics, business um, to come on the program. Um, so that's the objective of the program. Here we have the, the program structure. So you can see there is a mix of finance and technology modules on the program. So the technology modules, which are shown in green there, are delivered by the computer science department, but they're designed specifically for this program. 
So they're tailored for uh, the FinTech um, program. So you will learn about um, programming or coding uh, through the use of Java. Um, you'll learn about blockchain. You'll learn about smart contracts, which are kind of embedded in blockchain. And you'll learn about uh, network and wireless security, which is a very important part of, of the technology. But you'll also learn about the financial environments that fintech companies operate in, and you'll develop quantitative skills. And in particular, you'll develop the skills for um, interrogating large data sets to identify the information that you need. Um, so this is the application of uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence to big data sets, which is a very important part of um, the fintech uh, sector. And then the other thing that um, you'll, the other module you'll do is innovation management, which is a, a module designed to give you the kind of in entrepreneurial skills, which will be useful for those people who perhaps have a, a fintech idea that they want to bring to market. So not only will they get the, the kind of skill set in, in the kind of technology um, and, and understanding of the financial environment, but they'll also develop those entrepreneurial skills, which will allow them then to kind of bring their product uh, to the marketplace. And then, um, like any MSc, there is uh, in the third semester, so over the summer, there is a dissertation or an industry project that you work on. So you'll be applying the kind of skills and knowledge you've developed over the program to a particular problem. And one thing that uh, we're going to we're, we're wanting to do here is work with an organization called Fintech Wales, uh, which I'm a board member of. And um, Fintech Wales is an organization that brings together all the fintech companies operating in, in Wales. And uh, they're going to what we're hoping to do is uh, get those fintech companies to offer projects which students on the program can then work on maybe in the company or maybe in the university but they'll be working on a kind of real world project um, for their um, summer dissertation so just to summarize the unique features of the program you don't need to have any knowledge of computer science or coding that's all kind of brought to you in the program. You develop those skills in the program. You'll also develop entrepreneurial skills. And then, as I said, you'll have the opportunity to apply those skills to a real world project in the summer. OK, and that pretty much um, uh, covers what I wanted to uh, talk about. So I'll hand you back to Saf. That's brilliant, Mike. Thank you so much. Um, a really great session. I think I learned a lot from that, and I'm sure everyone else did as well. Um, I have to apologise. I appear to have neighbours that are having some sort of work done on their house. If you hear very loud drilling sounds, I'll pass over to my colleague. Um, so we have got a couple of questions that have come through. Um, I'm just going to read one of those out and then hopefully pass over to Mike to answer it before the drilling starts. Uh, I can hear them tapping the hammer just now. So a question that came through from Geraint on Facebook. At Swansea Uni, do you have many links with fintech businesses so I can get direct experience or exposure to these businesses? Okay, well, yes, as, as I just mentioned, we um, were working closely with an organization called Fintech Wales. And that's an organization of fintech companies uh, in Wales, uh, including companies like um, Wealthify and uh, Confuse.com. So they will be offering, or what we're working to develop is they will offer uh, projects which uh, students on the program can then work on in their, the, the summer um, as part of their dissertation. And um, so yeah, so that's something we're talking to FinTech Wales about now, and we're hoping to put in place uh, before the program starts. Thanks, Mike. That's great. And um, 
we have actually got a slide up on here that shows some of our other links as well. So not only do we have these fantastic links with FinTech Wales, as Mike has just said, and you know that's really been embedded as part of the program being developed. And it's really something that's reflected across all of our programs at Swansea University, not just within the School of Management, but across uh, all of the faculties is we have great links with industry. And you know, since the university's um, inception, really, um, we've been very linked to employment and the university, from, from my knowledge, was started to supply graduates into, um, into local industry at that time. So we have carried on that tradition. Um, you know, the campus that the School of Management sits on is the Science and Innovation Campus, is what it's um, kind of known as. And you can see some of those great companies we have links with just on the screen. And not just you know multinationals and large companies across the UK, but some of the smaller companies, uh, some uh, small to medium enterprises, charitable enterprises within the third sector, and you know some of these smaller companies have actually turned into you know huge huge successes. And Mike's given some great great examples of that. And you know I think that fintech is looking to shape up to be a huge industry for you know, for South Wales and, and the UK in general. So I think we're in a really great position. We've got an amazing employability team and, and I won't spend too much time on this, but they are careers consultants within the School of Management that our students and graduates have access to who are actually linked in with these industry um, members. We have great links with the accounting uh, bodies, big uh, firms across the UK in all sectors really, uh, but they are here to, to basically offer you one-to-one -one advice and, and actually guide students on their career, um, you know, what's going to happen in their career and where they'd like to go. Another question's come through uh, on the Q&A, so kind of linked actually, is there much support available at Swansea if I wanted to set up my own fintech company? So perhaps you, you'd be able to comment Mike on how the program actually supports that and then I can make some additions with regards to the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial support we have as well. Yeah so um, as I mentioned in the talk the um, the program has a module in innovation management which is really designed um, to enable people to kind of bring their ideas to the marketplace so it kind of takes you through the whole process of you know, you have an idea, how do you develop that? How do you um, find finance for it? Uh, how do you kind of deliver it to the marketplace? So it, it'll develop all those skills you're gonna need to bring your idea into fruition and, and hopefully into the development of a company which can then uh, sell your product to the marketplace, yeah. And, and the program is, um, is really, it's fantastic if you have got that idea and you just don't really know where to start. And I would say coupled with, you know, a team like our employability team that we have, um, we also have extensive advice and network opportunities for entrepreneurs. So we have our entrepreneurs network within the university and quite a lot of extensive experience within the School of Management uh, you know, members of staff that have set up their own businesses, but also offer mentoring and guidance to um, students that want to set up their own businesses. There's actually some great examples of students that have been really successful whilst at university and set up hugely successful companies. Um, and I know that Wales released their list of, you know, um, top 30 um, males and females in terms of, um, you know, high flyers and two Swansea graduates were on that list. And that's just a small, small section, um, two on the male list. And I think at least one of our female students uh, was on that list as well. So there are, is, you know, there's actually monetary support for these ideas. We offer funding, but we also offer um, that all, that support really, I guess, is the kind of hands under your feet to support you and, and get you in the right direction. Um, things like offering a business address um, and actually the practicalities of, you know, opening up a business is something that the university um, is really, really happy to guide students with. And, and we have got students that have made great, great use of that. Okay, we have another question for you, Mike. This is a great one. Yeah. Are dissertation topics confined to the industry projects in the summer or is there flexibility to develop my own topic? Yes, there is, there is flexibility. So you wouldn't have to take an industry project. 
Um, if you have your own project and it kind of meets the criteria for a dissertation, which you kind of talk over with your supervisor, then you, it's perfectly fine for you to kind of to, to work on that particular uh, idea that you have. In fact, it's, it's probably a good thing if you have your own idea because you're going to be spending three months working on that uh, dissertation. So it's got to be something you're interested in. It's no good you have been offered a project in something that you're just not interested in because you may not be motivated to do, to do particularly well. So if you're coming with your own ideas, that's, obvious, that's a good start because um, you're going to be much more motivated to do it. Brilliant. Um, a question that's come through, I'll just read out and I'll probably take this one if that's all right, Mike. So it's, is the programme open to EU citizens? Do you need to hold a UK degree to access? And lastly, are there any financing options? So I think there's three amazing questions in there that I think a lot of attendees will find really helpful. So answer to the first question, yes, this is open to EU citizens. This is open to students from, from all over the globe. So as long as you have a qualification that we consider an equivalent. So we accept qualifications from, from all over the world uh, and you meet our entry requirements, which is a, uh, an undergraduate degree of the equivalency um, you know, of the levels that then we set. We can offer advice on that. So do get in touch. I'll pop our, um, our details at the end of the session. Actually, Mike, if you scroll to the next slide, there might be uh, our contact details on that one. Um, oh, next one again. Yeah, please carry on submitting questions. There we are. So our email address is on there. And um, that's somrecruitment at swansea.ac.uk. I think that um, the slide has just knocked that off. So somrecruitment.ac.uk. I'm going to pop that in the chat function as well. But yes, the programme is open. Um, you don't need to have a UK degree to access it. So we do accept degrees from all over the world and uh, all of the equivalencies are available on the website for um, you know degree programs but I will pop a link in the chat uh, for that as well and then lastly are there any financing options so the short answer is yes there is this will vary you know hugely depending on where you are from so EU citizens for example that's changing quite significantly for this year given the fact that the UK is leaving the EU um, but we are offering um, quite significant uh, reductions of EU fees and we have lots of scholarships available for international students and non-EU residents. So I would say to please look on the university website, there's actually information specifically by each country. Uh, so you can find out what funding is available, you can see what the fees would be and what kind of access to funding you could find there. Um, and you can also email us as well. So what we do um, for Andra, thank you very much for that question, is if you send us an email, and I'll put my email address in there as well, we will follow that up with you and let you know exactly what you have access to. Really brilliant question, because I think it's something that a lot of students a lot of students worry about for postgraduate study and, and perhaps don't feel that there is anything available, because that's actually how it used to be, even until a couple of years ago, is that there was less and less funding but you know there's there's so many options and within the school we also have scholarships that we offer the university offers quite a generous scholarship package every year um and and we're really happy to share information on that um and our current students actually you can see on the screen there hopefully you'll be able to scan a qr code uh, you just hold up your camera to that that squiggly shape um, for those of you that use QR codes all the time, my description will probably make you laugh, but I didn't know how to use them until a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, just pop on that and you can actually talk to current students. Many of them have received scholarships. They are our ambassadors and you can join our online resources, of course, to find out more about uh, our programs like you're doing right now. Um, and you can attend a virtual open day if you want to find out more about studying at Swansea, of course. So I did promise I'd add our email address to the link. So I'm just going to do that. And then I think we've got another question that I've written down that came through my, from Mike. That was it, Mike. So it was, do you think that it's a good industry to join for getting a job? I think yes, uh, yes is what I've taken <laughs> from this question, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a brilliant industry to join because it's, there's so much happening. It's 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 a diverse industry, so you can specialise in an area that's of interest to you. 
So you might be interested in coding and developing apps. You might be interested in the kind of machine learning, the kind of the big data side, which is becoming more and more important. Um, so the, you know, big data is, is part of the way in which companies kind of uh, analyze and get intelligence and get information about you know, who's out there and what kind of products they want. So the analysis of that big data is becoming more and more important. So, uh, and that's through the use of um, kind of uh, machine learning kind of techniques. So that's another area. Um, or you could be uh, interested in blockchain, so blockchain development. Um, there's a whole wide range of things to get into um, to work in the, in the fintech sector. Um, it's rapidly growing. Um, it's fast changing. So you you have you know it's it's a really interesting kind of uh, sector to work in because you're constantly having to keep up um, and learn the new ways of doing things. So it's it's kind of really exciting to kind of be in that fast changing environment. Um, the salaries are good because the skill set is kind of a high level skill set. Uh, but which you will get coming off the program. But because you're coming in, into the marketplace with those high level skills, you'll be commanding a very good salary. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really exciting area to work in. Thanks, Mike. I, I've got a question actually is, mm -hmm. what, what for you do you think are the biggest challenges then? So that sounds all very, very positive and, and a really exciting industry to get into what are the challenges perhaps facing someone that's going to go into, into this sector? Um, I suppose, first of all, you may have to move to a location that maybe is not your first choice. So if, if um, you know, most of the jobs are still going to be in London and, and particularly the high paid jobs are going to be in London uh, or, or kind of around the London area. Um, you know, the other centres are growing, as I mentioned earlier, but you may have to get your first job in London. Um, so, and that may be, you know, it's an expensive city to live in. Um, so I think that's the main challenge. Um, the, the, it's, a, it's a, a new sector. So if you're getting a job with a, a small company, a startup company, then obviously there's a risk, there's an excitement there because you're working in a company that's at the startup phase and that's really exciting. You're kind of, you know, you're working with your team to kind of make the, the, the company successful, but not every startup company is successful. So there is a kind of risk associated with going into small startup companies in such a dynamic sector. Uh, but it's exciting as well. And if you've got that skill set, even though you fail or you, the first company you, you work for fails, um, other companies will be growing and they'll still be looking for that skill set and you can quickly, quickly move on to another company. Um, That's a great point, actually, Mike, is actually sometimes the failures are what get things moving in, in this type of sector, that quickly yeah. changing environment where something that doesn't work actually paves the way for something to happen and, and do it much better. So, you know, perhaps some of the attendees um, and the first people that, that join um, the cohorts, the next cohort will, uh, they'll be the people picking up the pieces and perhaps taking the failures of some of the most recent companies joining the FinTech sector and, and perhaps taking that to their advantage. Another yeah. great question has come through. Sorry, Mike, carry on. I was gonna say that, you know, we have a, a, a thing about failure in the UK you know, that failure is a bad thing. But if, if you're in the US, failure is not a bad thing. You know, this is how you learn. This is how you learn to do things better next time. So, you know, it's something we've got to kind of um, take on, I think, that idea that failure is, is not a bad thing. You know, it's about taking a risk and it may pay off and it may not. But if it doesn't pay off, you learn from it and move on. It's, um, it's, it's the culture of, of a dynamic sector. Absolutely. A great question is coming from Suraj. Thank you for this one. Is it worth doing a master's degree in fintech? I'm doing business administration with finance, but I have no knowledge about Python or programming language. Interested in stock market, equities and capital markets. Yes. Yeah, so as I mentioned, the, you, you, 
you need no prior knowledge of coding or Python or um, the kind of machine learning language um, before you come on the program because you'll be you'll be taught those skills on the program. Um, so you'll be taught coding through um, uh, Java. And then in the big data module, you'll learn Python, which is the main kind of programming language in the big data um, sector. Um, so that all those skills will, will be developed on the program. So all you need really um, to, to come on the program is just an interest in fintech, um, an interest in kind of developing your skills in this, in this dynamic area. Brilliant. Thanks, Mike. I think if anyone's got any specific questions about, you know, looking at their background, if they want, if you want to, you know, have a face-to-face -face or a one-to-one -one session with us, then you can do that by booking with our email. Of course, we have virtual open days, um, undergraduate and postgraduate sessions starting again in the new year. You can find that on the website, but I'm, I'm more than happy, uh, as is my colleague Gethin, who's on the call as well, to actually look at your individual situation and perhaps discuss what what particular program might be of, of you know interest to you? Um, you know we do have investment management, for example. If someone's interested in in stock markets, there's there's lots and lots of programs uh, within this exciting area that um, Mike and our other colleagues teach on. Uh, you know within the school. I'm just going to have a quick check through to see if I've got any other questions that have popped in. Ah, uh, here we go. How are job opportunities for international students in COVID times who do masters in fintech? So just say that again, yeah. So it's, what are the job opportunities like for international students in COVID times who do masters in FinTech? Perhaps I could just offer um, a few comments um, about the job market in general for international students. And then if you're happy to add then Mike about FinTech and international yeah. students. So this is a really great question. And, you know, something that I think a lot of people are, you know, really, really thinking about, particularly in, in times of COVID where many industries have been threatened, people have lost their jobs, you know, it's a very challenging time for, for many countries across the globe. I think, you know, most places have been affected. Um, and actually investing in a, a postgraduate degree is a, is a great way to, um, you know, kind of protect yourself and get yourself extra skills, particularly in the areas, you know, like fintech, which is such a rapidly growing industry that Mike has demonstrated with huge potential. But actually related to job opportunities for international students, it is quite an exciting time actually for, for study within the UK as we open up the post-study work opportunities. So we do have the new graduate uh, immigration route within the UK. So any student that comes and studies with us after, um, you know, from 2021, so the coming summer, um, if they've studied a taught programme, you can actually stay back for two years uh, to find employment. So, you know, that's a, a huge opportunity to, to really take the next step then, I guess, within fintech or any other area. And you can use those connections that you've made whilst at university, you know, through uh, organisations such as Fintech Wales, through our networks um, and our links. And then, of course, you know, we do have lots of platforms that we support international students with as well. So you'll notice the careers team that I've talked through. We don't just help students find jobs in the UK that are from the UK. You know, we're an international business school. Lots of our graduates are from overseas, whether that's China, India, Nigeria, um, from Europe. So we're very used to supporting students to find work in the UK, perhaps if they're from another country, but also finding work back in their home country as well. So we sign up for a couple of different platforms. One is called Hired. We have another called Student Circus. And that essentially allows us to advertise jobs that uh, either have companies within the UK that are willing to sponsor students for their um, visas. Of course, that isn't needed on the new graduate route, but would be if they wanted to stay longer. And then advertising jobs back in their home country. So jobs all over the world that our students then get a first look at and get support and advice on how to take on those roles. So, you know, in a really, really good position, I think, within the UK and within the university to get all of the support to find a job, um, you know, in, in an industry that actually it sounds like there's a huge amount of opportunity um, in, you know, quite a growing, a growing digital age, I guess.
I knew that was going to happen. There's always going to have to ha be uh, someone on mute, isn't there, when you're, when you're talking on a Zoom session. <laughs> I think that's all of the questions come through. Are there any final, final thoughts or comments um, that you'd like to make, Mike? And, and please do just pop any final comments into the Q&A or the chat if anyone wants to ask Mike a final question before we close. So just coming to the end of the hour, Mike, I'll let you just add a comment. No, just to, just to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about um, FinTech and the new programme. It's uh, an exciting new development that we're offering here at um, Swansea University. And you, you mentioned as well, it's, it's part of um, a kind of, it goes alongside a refresh of our existing um, specialist MSc finance programmes. So even if you're not interested in fintech, we have other uh, MSc finance programs in things like investment management or banking or finance generally that you could look at as well. Thanks, Mike. That, that's great. Um, doing my job for me now as well. Didn't even have to mention it. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for joining everyone. There's been some great questions and thank you so much, Mike. That was a brilliant session. Um, I think you've got, you know, at least the amount of people on this call that are interested in finding out more from FinTech. Um, so that was great. We're going to stop the live on Facebook, I think, very shortly, but please do get in touch. Um, drop us an email. You hopefully will have the details um, up from the presentation, but if not, you can find out more on our website um, and I've popped my details in the chat and I think we've also done that on Facebook as well. I think that is the final comments getting a couple of thank yous sent in so yeah thank you Mike great session another thank you so thank you very much for everyone that's posting those comments much appreciated I think we'll just stop there okay thank you very uh, much thanks Mike take okay. care bye bye, bye.